It's hard to believe that I've been making YouTube videos for almost a decade now. My first YouTube video was a Minecraft Let's Play uploaded on September 10th, 2014 when I was 14 years old on a channel called Professor Sunshine. I don't remember exactly when I decided that I wanted to start making videos. Some of my earliest memories are screwing around with my family's camera making little Lego stop motion films. You will die at the tip of my blade. It's all Jedi must. Arrogance is a path not easily ignored or forgotten. Dun, dun, dun. The first YouTube video I actually remember watching was the first Annoying Orange. And for a while, YouTube to me was just a bunch of silly viral videos, and it didn't go much deeper than that. It wasn't until Minecraft started popping off on YouTube that I really got into watching it constantly, and I definitely wasn't alone here. When I got to 8th grade, it seemed like everybody in my little nerd friend group had their own YouTube channel where they tried emulating their favorite YouTubers. After begging my parents for a microphone and screen recording software, I finally started plans to create my new channel. All right, hello everybody. This is Professor Sunshine's first ever video in the land of YouTube. I ended up uploading over 80 videos on the Professor Sunshine channel from 2014 to 2015, usually between 10 and 20 minutes each. I recorded heavy commentary over these videos, which gave me a little bit of practice when it comes to like speaking to an audience and stuff, even if nobody was actually watching. My main series on this channel was Prof's World of Worldy Goodness of which there were 32 total episodes. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode inside of Professor Sunshine's World of Worldy Goodness. Yeah, you may have noticed a bit of a change there in my voice. Uh, the wonderful thing about making all these videos back in the day is that I have a kind of cool time capsule to look back at that part of my life. And along with that, I can watch myself slowly come to terms with my identity as genderqueer as I started to so consciously voice train as the videos progressed, which is why you can see my voice is deeper in the beginning videos and it starts to get a little bit higher as it gets to the stuff further along in my life. So in the last episode, I messed around for a while, I made a few furnaces and I got killed by an annoying skeleton in that pool. We're gonna be doing the building game on the Hypixel server, so let's go into here. My voice is higher in the later videos because I was just starting to voice train to try to sound more feminine, and personally I think it's really cool that I have that journey documented here, even if it can be a little cringe sometimes. All this parkour I've done, it all leads up to this. This is what I trained for. The series started as just a basic survival Minecraft series where my friends and I would gather resources and build things and play mini games, but as the series progressed, I started to add characters and lore into the videos and really got a little bit overboard with it. At one point I had a random encounter with a chicken in a cave, and in later episodes I actually established that mob as the cave chicken, a kind of antagonist for the Professor Sunshine character. I would build huge creations off camera and react to them in my videos as if I was just finding them lying around. What is that blue stuff? Is that water? I can see, like, water trickling down in the cave down there. Wait, that's not water. Is this Prismarine? What in the world? In one episode, my character had a nightmare where they fought the cave chicken in the end. In others, I battled slime tornadoes and became a superhero. It was super cringe. And that's wonderful. I stopped making these videos because I was embarrassed by them as I got older. But as time has progressed, I honestly just wish I stayed on that one channel all this time. I kind of tried to reboot Prof's World of Worldly Goodness for a little while with a more story-driven second season. I even made this epic trailer for the new era. You came into our world. You destroyed our land. You killed our people by the thousands and left nothing behind but the faint smell of destruction. Well, I have news for you. You can take our resources. 
but you can't take our honor. We will get our revenge, and when we do, you will wish you never intruded into our territory. You will watch everything you worked for crumble beneath our feet, and you will know what it means to have all you care for taken from you. Why am I starting to feel like the cave chicken is the good guy here? I planned for the second season to be completely story driven. I made this spaceship for my character to fly around in and visit different worlds, but I only ended up making one episode of the series because my interest in Minecraft was honestly starting to wane, though I still do visit it from time to time even today. The very last video on the Professor Sunshine channel was made at the height of my emo phase, and in it I tried to transition my content from gaming to commentary. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you have been waiting for for eight months has finally arrived. I have returned from the ashes of my former internet microfandom to take my place as the rightful ruler of this YouTube channel. And with my return also comes content the likes of which has never been seen before, and adventures that simply cannot go unnoticed. Prof's back, baby. Yeah, this was a pretty awkward time for me, to put it lightly. None of my videos really took off on this channel, and honestly, I think that's for the best. I was not ready for that kind of attention. However, the channel gave me an outlet to express myself at a time where I really needed something like that, and taught me a lot about editing and graphics design and commentary, and I honestly don't think I'd be where I am today without Professor Sunshine. Eventually, I decided to start fresh. My new channel was named after my old dead name, so I'm just going to call it Channel 2 here. I uploaded a lot of videos on Channel 2 about all sorts of different things, but I sadly decided to delete it, so now they're all completely lost media. I don't remember what exactly drove me to delete all these videos, but at least it was only a short era in my YouTube journey from around 2016 to 2017. I did a lot of stuff on this channel. I reacted to weird funny games with my friend. I did a Reddit roast me challenge. I made tutorials for cosplays and cosplay props made out of foam. Uh, I actually have one of those right here. Laser pistol from Fallout 4. I talked about the new upcoming season 3 of Rick and Morty as well as the new Star Trek show, Star Trek Discovery. I even made a video just like this one talking about my old Professor Sunshine videos. I also started to make top 10 videos specifically about Star Trek. We'll talk more about that later, but it's worth noting that one of the videos I did for this channel, titled 10 Things That The Orville Did Better Than Star Trek Discovery, actually got around 50,000 views, which is still my most successful video on a solo channel, probably because the shows just came out and there was a lot of discourse comparing them at the time. I read and responded to every single comment, and that little moment in the spotlight really made all of my work before seem worth it. The final video I planned for Channel 2 was going to be a fun one. I was going to create a 7 foot tall replica of a Lego minifigure out of nothing but flat foam boards. Ah! Unfortunately, the project dragged on and on and on and on and on, taking months to complete as my life got more and more complicated and I started to become fascinated by a certain funny green plant. This video never got made, and I made the stupid decision to delete all of Channel 2's videos. However, shortly later, my friend came over and helped me finish the Mega Figure once and for all, which still stands behind my desk to this day. After Channel 2, I graduated high school, and I took a short break from making videos, but it wasn't long before I got the urge to return again. In the summer of 2018, I got more and more into making beats on my computer and writing lyrics. I came up with the idea for a story-driven science fiction musical. After years of planning and brainstorming and literal pounds of marijuana, I mean coffee, I finally released the first episode of Method of Gravity on Valentine's Day of 2021. 
Method of Gravity was going to be different from my other channels. I wanted to show the potential of what could really be accomplished by just one person in their bedroom. Using the same techniques I used to make the Mega Figure and the cosplay props that I did, I made two model ships, a hero ship and a villain ship, as well as a spaceship interior background and a little control console that my character could use for some interior shots. I created a story about an alternate universe version of myself who became an immortal space explorer, who eventually gets trapped in the gravity of a black hole. Unable to die, my character merged with the black hole and went on to slowly consume all matter in the entire universe until eventually rebounding into a new reality where he possessed every particle and basically served as God. Method of Gravity started with a six-part musical called Quantum Singularity. It was finally released on the 28th of March, 2021. There's just one small problem. My singing. Far too small to see over the horizon with the lie so long you forgot what you're disguising. Yeah, unfortunately, I was incredibly impatient and tried to release Method of Gravity way before I was ready to release a whole album by myself, let alone a musical. I was still an incredibly amateur musician, and it shows. A year later, on Valentine's Day of 2022, I released a remaster of Quantum Singularity, as well as my second musical, Space Time Anomaly. The remaster and the new album were not perfect. I was still learning how to mix, record, and master stuff, but the quality definitely improved since the first uploads. In the second album, I began experimenting with animation more. I created a cartoon version of the ship and characters from the first musical, as well as a Lego stop-motion version, a clay version, and a paper version. All of these variations in art style were meant to represent different universes in the story. In Space Time Anomaly, the character from Quantum Singularity travels the multiverse, gathering variants of himself to build an interdimensional army with the ultimate goal of destroying all life in the universe, in the multiverse, to prevent anyone from ever experiencing what he had experienced again. I have no doubt that one day I will remaster both Quantum Singularity and Space Time Anomaly, but for the time being, Method of Gravity is on a hiatus. It's honestly taking me so long to complete, and I'm just getting bored of it. If you're interested, these videos are the only ones I've discussed so far that are still publicly available if you go to the Method of Gravity channel and look in the playlist tabs. Just keep in mind that these are not the final versions. Method of Gravity was the first project that I spent a lot of time advertising. I documented the process of making everything on the Method of Gravity TikTok. Hello, my name is and this is my spaceship. Uh, to be more accurate, it is the ship that I use in my music videos, uh, Method of Gravity. You can see I film it on the green screen there. Uh, here it is flying through the infinite abyss of space, uh, right by a black hole. Black holes are really important to my central story as well. Uh, but at some point in the story, uh, eventually my main character ends up in another universe where he finds an animated version of the same ship and an animated version of himself as well. But uh, I got a little bit carried away, and in the next few episodes, he goes to like multiple other universes collecting different versions of himself. Like there's a Lego universe with the same ship that only shows up for about like half a second. And uh, there's also the paper universe <laughs> you can see here. Uh, I thought that was kind of neat. And the clay one, the clay universe. So yeah, if you like it, check it out in my bio. I was able to get a few people to check out my videos this way, amassing about 5,000 views on the first version of Quantum Singularity, and I honestly got roasted to high heavens. To be fair, there was also a lot of constructive criticism that I really did take to heart. Method of Gravity hasn't really gone anywhere yet, but luckily, while I was working on it, I got an opportunity to reach a bigger audience than ever before. In 2021, I started watching the YouTube channel Trek Culture. They were one of my favorite channels for Star Trek themed content, along with Trek Yards, Jesse Gender, and a couple more. One day while I was scrolling through YouTube on my phone, I saw a post that said that Trek Culture was hiring writers for the channel. I sent a resume to What Culture on their website, I explained my history of making Star Trek themed top 10s in the past and some of my other content, and I wrote them a little sample video script for an example of my writing. I was delighted to hear that the company would actually take me on, and my first article was published on the 15th of October 2021. Finally, it feels like my hard work has paid off. Basically, overnight I went from having like zero audience to being able to reach like thousands of people in a community that I really care about, Star Trek. 
I have been a huge Star Trek fan since I was a kid. Not to mention that everybody I've met through Trek culture has been so nice and incredibly understanding of me while I learned to write more professionally. They even invited me to appear on camera for the channel's 250,000 subscriber special, along with Trek Yards and Jesse Gender, who I mentioned earlier as some of my favorite channels. This was so exciting. Working for What Culture has just been wonderful, and I'm really happy for the opportunities they gave me. At some point, I decided that Method of Gravity was taking too long to finish, and I wanted to make a new solo channel where I could just post whatever silly, fun stuff I wanted to. This channel, Coffee Nebula, started with a dumb Star Trek Voyager meme that I made just because I was bored. Senior Bridge Officers, report for duty. Commander, set a new course. There's coffee in that nebula. This was followed by the music videos for my album Ones and Zeros, and a retrospective on the characters Clark and Stanley from Spore Galactic Adventures. To my surprise, the Clark and Stanley video actually blew up quite a lot, at least a lot more than I expected it to, and the channel is actually off to a pretty good start. I really just want this channel to be a place for me to experiment and try new things. Soon, I'm going to do a video about everything I've learned on YouTube in the last 10 years. If that interests you, then be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can catch it and my other videos whenever they come out. But the main focus of the video will be to never give up on something that you enjoy just because you don't have immediate success with it. You have to keep at it and keep the dream alive, even if it's unrealistic. Yes, it does take luck, but the more you try, the more you put out there, and the more you hone your craft, the more chances you have to get a lucky opportunity. It's been a long journey since my first Minecraft video. In that time, so many famous creators have come and gone. Recently, for some reason, so many huge names have left YouTube or moved on to other things. But I've grown as a creator in so many ways over the years, and I feel like despite the fact that I've been on this website for so long, my story is only just beginning. I'm making a goal to hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel before the end of the year. This would be my first solo channel to reach this milestone. I've never even hit a thousand subscribers before, so it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you, and see you in the next video. Nobody's going to be watching this right at the beginning anyway, so hopefully people will watch it later on. Hopefully. I hope I'm not just doing this for no reason. I mean, I love doing this. I I really do enjoy making videos, but it's still, it's, it's nice to have some people, like, seeing your work. I remember I used to play this game called Spore by EA. I, I don't think it was that popular. Not a lot of people knew it, but... Every comment I got, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Somebody actually thought what I did was good. And it's, it's just really nice. It's a nice feeling. Oh, yeah. I think I found the perfect spot. It's a nice plains biome over there. That's going to be great for setting up my house.